Uh, Ferguson Geronimo. Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd, and welcome to the album review for the new Ferguson Geronimo LP, Unlearn. Now, if you guys are in the mood for some double review action and want to hear an audio review, you can also head to theneedledrop.com, link in the D-box, and hear a review of a track from the new Kralis album, Diotima. Diotima. Tamana. Diotima. In case you don't know, they're a black metal band. Now here's a question. Do you like fun? Of course you don't, because if you did, you would already know about this new Ferguson Geronimo LP. This album has been pretty anticipated for me just because these guys put out one of my favorite singles of last year, Turning Blue, which was the B-side of the Never Satisfied 7-inch. But I have to admit, I wasn't a big fan of this album the first time I listened through it. I guess you could say I kind of fell prey of expecting the sound from the 7-inch to kind of translate to this. And not to say that there is a loss of quality here, that's not what I'm trying to argue. I guess what I'm saying is that I expected the sound of those two songs to just be like this. Just 11 or 10 more songs that sound like that. You know? You know? You know what I'm saying? A little bit of a post-punk influence on Turning Blue on that single, which I kind of thought that mm, was going to be on Unlearn. But instead, Fergus and Geronimo, they still wear their influences on their sleeve, and here they jump from sound to sound to sound. One minute they're playing a really strange, goofy, Frank Zappa-esque Motown and doo-wop track, and the next minute they're kind of screaming in your face with a little bit of garage rock philosophy, with things don't always go the way you want them to, with a voice that kind of sounds like the late J. Retards. <laughs> And the song subjects seem to jump around from idea to idea to idea, too. There are tracks on here about girls with English accents, a big swing at the music industry with Wanna Know What I Would Do, and Baby Boomers. And that's pretty much all I could figure out, just from the song titles. Even though the production here is pretty rough around the edges, and these guys are not refined very much in terms of songwriting, the tracks here are pretty short. There's something about the personality of this album that's drawing me in. Something that, I don't know, is maybe akin to Adam Green's album. Even though these guys jump from song subject to song subject to sound to sound, they're always pretty funny, witty, clever, however you want to describe it. Mm. It's an LP I enjoyed a lot more after it was over. Not to say that I was glad that it was over, but after the last song ends, you then kind of get the perspective and you see how these guys can shapeshift and how many different sounds and just moods these guys can emulate with just not even batting an eye. Because the truth is, they do it all pretty well. Plus, getting through that first listen isn't all that hard because this thing is only 29 minutes long. Overall, I think it's a great debut album, although I read in an interview on 130 BPM, I will link that in the D-box, that these guys may not be writing music anymore, or maybe just for a while, and they're going to embark on different projects. I'm not exactly sure. Vague. The future's fuzzy. I'm feeling a light eight on this, though it is really short. I'm just enjoying it for its fun attitude, just its quirkiness, and I think you guys may dig it for the same reasons. Gonna add it to the love list when I get a chance, and uh, of course you can hear several tracks from it on theneedledrop.com. Okay. Keep being awesome. Anthony Fantano, Ferguson Geronimo, what should I review next? Forever. Mm -hmm.